What's going on everyone? I'm hanging out here with our boy Petro and he is having a little bit of a hibiscus treat and uh, I have some news. Here comes Petro. Hey little lady, come here. Come here. There you go. They love hibiscus. These guys are my rhino iguanas and they're so incredible. And I wanted to talk about iguanas today because we have a small victory here in Florida. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but there was a bill being introduced by one of our students. Whoa, what are you doing? You're not supposed to eat the camera. You're not supposed to eat the camera, little lady. Oh my gosh, what a crazy little girl. Anyhow, there was a bill being introduced by a state senator that was going to change the language to the already existing iguana ban, the green iguana ban here in Florida. And they were going to add any iguana to this bill. They were basically going to make all iguanas completely illegal to own here in Florida, and that is not good. So what happened was our friends at US Arc, really great people who have taken it upon themselves as an organization to fight these draconian bills, these anti-reptile legislation that's been coming out here in Florida. And they basically fought it, and we had a victory. They actually did away with it. Uh, the bill died on the vine, never made it uh, to the house, uh, so this way it doesn't become a law. Now, it's kind of interesting, these bills, because um, usually uh, they call these people lawmakers, and their job is to make laws, senators and congresspeople and things like this, uh, bureaucrats also. And basically these people just look for things to put into law because it helps their career as a politician. Now, some laws are clearly good. Some laws definitely help out. Um, not anti-law, because then you have anarchy. There does need to be some regulations and so on and so forth. But basically, a lot of these people that uh, get into politics as lawmakers want to get their name on a bill. They want to say, look what I did. I stopped these horrible people from owning these animals that are destroying our environment. And the reality is, is that cyclora iguanas and some of the other iguana species that were on the bill uh, that are also in captivity are animals that have never been uh, released into the wild. They've not established any breeding populations. And therefore, they are not a nuisance. These are pets. Thank you to all our loyal Patreon members out there who have helped to create an amazing reptile community online with us. This week's shout out goes to our good friend, Diana Gonzalez. And beyond that, the fact that we can keep cyclora iguanas, like our rhino iguanas, our Cuban iguanas, and blue iguanas, and the like, is fantastic because in their country uh, of origin, for example, I'm trying to get this bit of skin off of her nose. You're not going to bite me if I grab you, are you? There you go, little lady, see? Doesn't that feel better? Let me just get that off of her. Ah, oh, much better. Much, much better, isn't that? Um, the iguanas that are from Hispaniola, Dominican Republic and Haiti are the two countries that are found there. Um, these are all animals that are endangered. Especially in Haiti right now, uh, there's a lot of political unrest in that country. Gangs are ruling the country. People are starving. So you can imagine how it is for these animals. If people see these animals, they kill them and eat them because people in Haiti are enduring incredible hardships. And I don't blame them for seeing this type of animal. If you see it, you can eat it. Uh, these people are in just dire, dire straits. So here in this country, the fact that we're able to keep these animals is fantastic. Look at Petro, he's just spreading out here in the sun. It's amazing because we're providing an area where these animals can live safely. Uh, you know, I often say it's better to be alive in captivity than to be extinct forever in the wild. Um, so what we're doing here is a good thing by keeping these animals in captivity and reproducing them in captivity. Uh, I think it's a fantastic thing, especially when these animals are now severely endangered in the wild. So that's number one, uh, as far as a good thing about this bill being overturned, because if they made it difficult for us to keep these animals, you're just hurting the animals. They are not loose in the uh, environment. Um, these days, reptile keepers like myself and you out there, um, we're much, much more, uh, look at this girl, look at her. We're much more um, 
you know, knowledgeable about keeping animals in a proper way, about not releasing them into the environment. Uh, we are stewards of these animals. Look at how she just climbed up on me. I think that's just amazing. That's what's so cool about keeping these animals as pets or being a steward of them. We have a loud helicopter going overhead. I apologize. But anyhow, we get to share our space with these beauties. And they are intelligent animals. They do interact with me, as you can see. She feels extremely comfortable with me. She just climbed right up here. She knows I'm giving a little speech. She wants a little bit more hibiscus. Maybe I'll be able to go find some for her. But they're incredible species to work with, and it would be a travesty um, if these animals were no longer allowed to be kept uh, as easily as they are now. Um, easy in the way that, you know, you can go out and with just a Class 3 permit, you can own these animals. I would hate to see any more regulation. Uh, Over-regulation is horrible. Um, we're adults here. We want to be able to keep them. Are you going to kiss my nose? Are you going to bite my nose? What are you going to do? Anyhow. Uh, it's just an important thing uh, for people to be able to keep these animals. Um, I just think it's amazing. I produce these videos for you guys. Um, we want these animals to be um, experienced by people. I want you to see how amazing they are, as long as she doesn't poop on me. Um, even still, here she goes. She's going to come on up here a little bit more, feel a little bit more comfortable. I think that's just really the coolest thing. So, very important. So let's go ahead. Are you going to climb up more? What are you going to do, baby? Are you going to go on my head? She likes to go on my head. This girl here, she'll be reproducing soon. In about another two, three months, she'll be laying her eggs. They have not yet uh, bred for the season, but they will. Uh, they produce every single year. Last year, I had bad luck with the eggs. This year, hopefully, I'll be on hand to dig them up myself and uh, to put them in the incubator. But you can see beautiful, beautiful lizards the rock iguanas, the spiny tail iguanas, um, the uh, lesser Antillean island iguana, um, just a lot of species that we keep here in Florida that really benefit from being in captivity since their own islands are under you know so much pressure from habitat loss, tourism, uh, feral animals like rats, dogs, and cats that are killing their eggs. Um, these guys are herbivores and um, they have not been released into Florida. Let's go see Guapo and Lola. Oh, you're gonna have to go down. Oh, you got sharp claws, you know. You gotta go down, lady. Go on down. Get down, there you go. That's my girl. I love her. And uh, she's getting nice and fattened up for the breeding season. So, the other cool thing that's going on with the US Arc, why I wanted to talk about them, because they do so many good things here for us here in Florida and abroad, US Arc Florida, um, they are having an auction this weekend, the 16th and 17th, and it's an online auction. You just go to usarcflorida.org and you'll be able to uh, see the specifics of how you can partake in this awesome auction. It's raising money for the cause of these great folks that are fighting for our ability to keep animals here in Florida. It's gonna be open to anyone all over the world. It's an online auction. Now, you may be thinking, hey, why should I support US, Florida, US Arc Florida? And that's because what happens in Florida, well, so goes the rest of the country. People get very, very concerned and freaked out by reptiles, and we're trying to dispel these horrible prejudices against us and the animals we love. Come here, Quops. Here's some hibiscus for you. I know you want it. You're in, you should be warmed up. Oh, a little stinker you making. You should be warmed up enough, buddy. Let me get that. Look at that. He is such a good guy. He is my boy. Yes, I know. I know. So they're doing this auction to raise money because these type of uh, pressure that they put on lawmakers and uh, lobbying and all kinds of work, lawsuits that they have to... Um, that they have to initiate to fight these draconian rules uh, takes money. So they're having an auction. So you guys can actually partake in the auction online. Just go to usarc.org, usarcflorida.org, my apologies. And uh, they will have all kinds of really cool uh, things for you to get involved with. They'll tell you how to get involved in the online auction this weekend on uh, Saturday and Sunday. 
and uh, it should be a really fun thing. Uh, I know there's a lot of great people contributing animals and supplies and everything you may need. So get on over there and check that out because that's going to be huge. Right now, Guapo is a little too relaxed. You can see he's just kind of closing that eye. Let's let's go ahead and clean off that third eye of his. This is the pineal eye. Some lizards have three eyes, and it's an actual working eye, but it doesn't have a lens, uh, and of course no eyelid. It's got that transparent scale, and it helps him thermoregulate, and it tells light and dark. So it helps him kind of figure things out. You don't want this? You don't want any of this? Well, that's fine. You don't have to have it because we have your girlfriend Lola. She's a good girl. Come on out, Lola. Look what I got. Look at this. Are you going to close your eye too, or are you going to come out? Don't be so antisocial, okay? Come on. Nobody wants to come out and eat a hibiscus treat? This is unheard of. This is absolutely unheard of. Come on out here. It is, I guess, a little bit early. Come here. Let's get her out. Another beautiful lizard that I've had since 2004, her and Guapo. And they're just amazing, man. So I couldn't imagine not being able to keep these guys or to make it more difficult for me to keep. Like I used to have to go through the whole process of getting this permit um, for Buttercup, which is why I wanted her to go somewhere uh, where they, they wouldn't make me keep her indoors all year. Um, I wouldn't want to keep, I would have to keep these guys indoors as prohibited species. I do not want to do that. They make it difficult and it's just not right. I just don't like laws that limit our ability uh, as responsible keepers and responsible adults and contributors of society to be forced to, um, you know, take away this right, this privilege that we have. Um, I don't like punishing everyone for knuckleheads that uh, do the wrong thing by the animals. And that's why it's important we police ourselves and we put good practices into place for keeping these animals alive. So let's go see the last two that are actually gonna be going to my buddy's house very soon. Here's the female. Her arm is completely dialed in now. She's got no issues at all. Where is our boy? Oh, look who it is. Now this guy here, I don't know if he'll take from my hand, but here's, here's a flower. He is so food motivated, it's insane. Oh boy, try and don't bite me. There you go, just have a little taste. Just have a little taste. If he actually eats this out of my hand, it'll be a minor victory here, people, because he is still a loony tuned. Come on, look at this flower. Well, he's letting me touch him with the flower. Oh, there you go, that's the boy I know. That is a crazy guy. This guy's just never tamed up, but he is gorgeous. And um, I really want to make the room for the rhino iguanas to live in here. That's kind of what I want to have happen. I want the rhinos in here. We're going to pull this down. Um, I may keep this as is for juveniles uh, that I can, you know, raise up some of the baby rhinos we can put in here. Um, that'll be good. But um, I personally just think Mike will do a good job with these guys. He builds amazing enclosures. And they are a beautiful cyclora that, you know, he's been interested in keeping. So we'll just leave these hibiscus in here. Look at these two. It's breeding season, so they're going to be annoying each other. That happens. Look at her. She might actually come over here and check things out. Now, the key with cyclora is to provide them with enormous enclosures, big enclosures. Um, I would even want to go bigger than this, um, which would be just awesome. Visual barriers are good, but they tend to like to climb up on the rocks and kind of staked out their little territory. Now, in the wild, one male would have uh, his territory would overlap with a few different females, so he would breed a few different females, but the females would have their own little territories. Um, they do come together. If there's a food supply, they'll wander into that area. They'll all congregate. But generally, they have their own little territories, and they are pretty territorial. Now, a lot of controversy. A lot of people keep too many animals too close. you got to have large enclosures. Uh, if you want to keep multiple animals so that they can get away from each other. I would love to build something as big as I have for Slinky for these guys and keep maybe, you know, um, 1.3 in there. That would be really fun to keep that many Cyclora, like a trio of Cyclora. I think that would be interesting. These guys are not in the mood for their 
their little um, hibiscus, unfortunately, for them. Uh, not for me. They ate yesterday, so I'm not really worried about them. But check it out. He's back to sleeping, and she's up there. So no one has actually eaten anything, which is really strange. But perhaps they'll just get warm, and then they'll be able to do that. So not a problem. But people, very important. Go to usarc.org. Help support them. Donate if you want. Also, head on over this weekend. Right now, get ready, because there will be a very cool auction that you guys can be a part of. US Org Florida, or US Arc, uh, Florida or usarcflorida.org, and uh, you can check out everything. You can check them out on Instagram as well, Facebook, and YouTube for any videos and updates um, that, that they're doing. Daniel Parker is the man there, and uh, he does a good job of getting out there to Tallahassee, uh, talking to our state representatives, talking with FWC, so that we can continue to own and care for these animals that are such a big part of our lives. And um, I thank you guys. I know you guys have been really, really helpful. I appreciate each and every one of you that watch these videos and feels the need to uh, do a little bit more, uh, whether it by be by donating to US Arc Florida or to heading over to our Patreon channel. Um, I am humbled by that. I really appreciate you guys' support, and so do our animals. So thanks again, guys. We'll talk to you again real soon. Uh, we got more videos coming up, and I'll be seeing you on another one of those really soon. See ya.